Welcome back to the Ericsson Broadcast Skybox. I'm Brett White. I'm joined today by Thomas Agascog, the head of digital services for Ericsson North America. Thomas, thank you for being here today. Thanks, Thanks Brett. First, just give us an overview of where the digital services business stands right now. Well, first of all, we, uh, we just released our report and we are in a good shape. We're improving every quarter. I think we're in a turnaround with this business, but we're having enormously good traction with our customers, not only in North America, but also globally. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of it is coming from the operators now preparing themselves for 5G, uh, which uh, you know, requires uh, a lot of investments and a lot of focus on, uh, on a lot of digital services parts of the portfolio. From not just core, but also the areas of charging, billing, activation, mm -hmm. provisioning, assurance, and a lot of other things that we have in our portfolio. So that's uh, 2019. As you're talking to customers, what are they really looking for from Ericsson in, uh, from 2020? Well, 2020 is really the year when we're going to kind of make uh, 5G happen in a more commercial sense. Um, and I think what, what the key thing really from customers right now is automation, automation, automation. Mm -hmm. And I think there are three reasons for why it's so important. And I think it's important to understand them as 5G technology comes in on core. The first one is that we are delivering now cloud-native software. We're mm -hmm. actually world leader in cloud-native software development on core. Right. Um, and with that, it becomes smaller microservices that it also needs a lot of management in order to keep the software up to date. And, and the only way to do that is really a fully automated software delivery process. And we have that. Mm -hmm. and, and our customers are also moving into that. So that's one reason why automation is so important. Otherwise, we're not going to have the right software levers there. The second is that with 5G comes the ability to move workloads towards the edge when you need a lot of compute power. For example, when you're playing gaming and stuff like right. that, if you're a consumer. Mm -hmm or move it back to the central offices, depending on how where you want to put them. And you can also scale them up and scale them down. This is the beauty of cloud-native software, quite easily. And all that cannot be a manual process, so this also needs to be fully automated. A lot. And, and, and I would like to say that the third yeah. thing, which is very important to our customers, is also the opportunity for them to take, get new revenues with specifically the enterprise segment. Right. And, and when you want to do that, and they want to make sure to offer that to our customers using 5G technology, the enterprise segment also needs to do, do as much self-service as possible so that it can be fully automated in the back end to, to quickly deliver those services, to be comp competing on the market, right? So mm -hmm. I think if, if anything, I think automation is the key word that, that operators are looking for in order to really make 5G come to life and, and do it at the cost point and, mm -hmm. and specifically at the speed point that their customers are demanding from them. We've seen a lot of customers launch 5G on standalone networks, now they're looking to go, I'm sorry, on non-standalone networks, and now they're looking to go to standalone. Why is that important, and what does Ericsson offer in that area? Well, I think that the key thing really by going kind of standalone, which is coming more, mm -hmm. is really that you're going to get the full, full benefit end-to-end -end of, of uh, important uh, characteristics like latency improvements and so on. Right. The non-standalone is very important because we want to reuse all the investments that the operators have, have done so that they can launch a 5G experience to, for example, for a better mobile broadband uh, experience. But when you're coming to specific, uh, can maybe industry applications, specific use cases where latency and specific performance things becomes very important, we need, to, we need to go there. I mean, it's an ecosystem as well. I think that the reason we're starting on standalone as well is that there needs to be devices ready in the marketplace and so on. So it's all coming together. But we are actually here live with real equipment demonstrating that we can do an end-to-end -end user case across a standalone network that involves radio, device, transport, core, and orchestration of that network slice. So if you, if you haven't seen it or have a chance to see it, you should see it. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, very interactive and very, very enthralling. Why are software-defined networks important in the 5G world? Tell us about that. Well, software-defined networks is so crucial because, as you know, we have for a while now in industry separated software from hardware in the digital services area. And, and with software-defined infrastructure and software-defined networks, we can also manage the characteristics of that, the underlying infrastructure, so that it also works with the software. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is obviously as important as I said in the beginning about automation, that if you don't get this to also be automated, you will also not be able to deliver the end-to-end -end experience. And that's why the infrastructure is a very important part of how to deliver that experience. And we are also very strong in this area, and it is important for us to help our customers to manage this end-to-end -end experience. Well, Thomas, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for watching. And uh, please stay tuned for more updates from Ericsson. Thank you.